Hello again. The day before yesterday, I spoke about how the police have changed over the years. At risk of rambling on like an annoying old person, I thought I might say a few words about the changes which have taken place regarding general practitioners or family doctors, as they were once known. 50 or 60 years ago, doctors lived and worked in ordinary houses like everybody else. Two rooms on the ground floor of their home would be used as waiting room and surgery. There was no question of telephoning to make an appointment. Most people at that time didn't have telephones in their home anyway. You just turned up at the surgery in the morning and took a seat. The doctor's wife was often the receptionist and she just sat in the waiting room and found your notes before you saw the doctor. That was it. There was no question of not being seen that day. After his surgery hours, the doctor would make house calls, visiting people too ill to come to his house. The great advantage of this system was that the doctor knew his patients and they got to know him. He lived, worked in the area, knew his neighbours, neighbours knew him. Why this system was changed, I've never been able to fathom. But in the 1970s, a shift began away from family doctors towards health centres, which mean that seeing the doctor at once became more difficult and there was less chance of seeing one particular doctor who might know you and know about your particular problems. Instead, there was a team and you often had to take potluck about whom you saw. At the same time, a new profession was created, that of the doctor's receptionist. Of course, now there's a group of doctors in a specially built place, rather than just one person. It wasn't enough for somebody's wife or daughter to sit in the waiting room and deal with the paperwork. Instead, a whole tribe of women were needed. At my local practice, there were four of them sitting behind a barrier in the reception area. Once doctors were only found in special buildings called health centres or practices, things changed. It became more difficult to see a doctor, for one thing. For another, the receptionists had increased power and acted as gatekeepers, preventing people, if they could, from actually seeing a doctor. It is not at all uncommon now to have to explain intimate medical details over the telephone to a receptionist, who will then decide if the problem is worth bothering the doctor about. <coughs> These women revel in their power and are often quite sniffy with patients. The patients are forced to act as supplicants, as though they are applying for charity, rather than seeing a man whose wages they pay via their national insurance contributions and taxes. The doctors and receptionists are the important people and the patients are peasants seeking an audience with their betters. Of course, actually getting to see the doctor now is very hard and the only appointments available are usually emergency ones, which means that one has to ring up first thing in the morning and take whatever is offered. It's clear that the doctors and receptionists are running the operation for their convenience rather than for ours. I'm quite shameless about exaggerating my symptoms if I wish to see the doctor. I've had good mileage out of complaining about pains in my left arm and a vice-like feeling around my chest. Hinting that you might be having a heart attack works wonders. Imagine that though, having to pretend that you might be dying in order to get to see your GP. I'm guessing that everybody from Britain who is watching this will have a similar tale to tell. As I say, I have no idea at all why the old system, where the doctors lived and worked in the same street as their patients, had to stop. It was effective and a good deal more convenient and human than that which we have now. <laughs>